Alright guys, so here we are, a long overdue, ready to be updated video. Uh, we had this video done before, it was incredibly outdated. Wanted to share my message in a much more condensed fashion and a much newer fashion. Probably the most discussed detailing topic on YouTube. You'll probably find a million of these stinking car wash videos. So if you love mine, great. If you don't, that's also great. Basically going to hammer through proper wash methods, some tips, and how to decipher, the first thing, how to decipher when you're washing a vehicle if I can do a waterless wash or a bucket wash. Probably the most asked question I get from our clients on maintenance is, how do I know if I can do a waterless wash or if I need to do a conventional bucket wash? And the answer is very, very simple. Like this truck here, if your vehicle is loaded with crud, if it's been weeks since you've washed it, if it's got debris kicked up the side, if you look down the side of the vehicle and you have a film of crud from weather that it's been through, you need to do a bucket wash. If it's just lightly dusty, if it hasn't been exposed to inclement weather, then you can do an EcoShine waterless wash. So that's a quick way to answer that. The other question I get a lot of is, Chase, man, what about phone cannons? You got phone cannons? Do you sell phone cannons? Yes, we sell phone cannons. You don't have to use a phone cannon with every single wash. Even when you're bucket washing, you don't have to use one every single wash. How do I determine if I need to use a phone cannon or not? Very, very simple. If your vehicle is abundantly dirty, use a phone cannon. Phone cannons are meant to be used with a pressure washer. There's also the more conventional Gilmore foam gun, which we also sell in our boutique, um, to be used with a garden hose. But this is a tool, just like everything else, and it has its place. Excuse me. It has its place. So you don't have to use it with every single wash. The goal of any wash, whether you're doing an EcoShine waterless wash, a multiple bucket wash, implementing a foam cannon, it's all about emulsification and removal of the surface debris without scratching the surface and swirling the surface. So whatever method you want to use that is safely going to remove the debris is all you need to do. So does this need to be used for every single wash? Absolutely not. Only on those times, either A, when you've got a ton of time on your hands and you're just wanting to have a beautiful spa day with your vehicle in the driveway, wonderful. Or if your vehicle is heavily soiled like this one, that would also be a great time to do it. But it is not necessary for every single wash. So one of the main things to consider when doing a maintenance detail or maintenance wash on your vehicle is to always be in the shade and do the car when it's cool. Anytime you detail a car that is hot to the touch, whether it's the hood, the wheels, the brakes and all that, you're just asking for water spots you're asking for product to dry, you're just asking for trouble, okay? So I always want to be in the shade and you want the car to be cool. Um, so that's one thing to consider. Another thing to consider is before you start on the vehicle, we are actually washing the vehicle. We like to do our wheels and tires first. The reason for this is because if I were to do my wheels and tires secondary, if I was to do them after I wash the car, I would now have water from my wash process sitting on the vehicle just asking for water spots, just, just drying while I do my wheels and tires, and we don't want that. So we'll do our wheels, tires, and fender well detailing first, and then after this, we'll move into the actual wash process. Oh, for more information on wheel and tire detailing, you can, we have a, we have a video specifically for wheels and tires. All right, so after we've done the wheels and tires, after we've got those decontaminated and cleaned up, before you begin the wash process, the other thing you want to address is any of your fender wells. Now, on this F-250, we've got a ton of chassis exposed in the back. We've also got plastic fender wells back here. In the front, we've got carpet fender wells. We want to get any sort of all-purpose cleaner, um, any sort of degreaser that you might want to use in there, any sort of brushing, pressure washing, anything that you want to do in the fender wells, suspension, and any of that we want to have done after the wheels and tires before we start our wash. We want to get all this crud knocked out. So one of the main things that you want to consider when you're trying to decipher what type of wash you're going to do on your vehicle, what I mean by what type of wash is, are you going to do a three bucket soap, hose water, your buckets, grit guards, wash mitt, all of that, are you going to do that version, a conventional car wash, or are you going to do an EcoShine waterless wash? Now on this Rolls, this car is not very dirty, um, so we're going to do, on the majority of the car, we're going to do a waterless wash. However, 
down low, I'd say probably the lower six inches of the vehicle around the bottom and at the back are pretty dusty. The whole goal with whatever wash method you choose is emulsification. In other words, how do I get the dirt or the dust or the debris off of the surface safely without inflicting swirls and scratches? So in this particular case, what we're going to do, I'm actually going to fire up our pressure washer. And just on the lower parts of the vehicle, we're going to pressure wash off all the dirt and debris to, say, to get rid of as much debris down low and at the back as we possibly can before we even touch the car. And then the rest of the vehicle will be able to carry out our EcoShine waterless wash. Again, it's all about emulsification and removal of the dirt in the safest way possible. If you are going to do a bucket wash, if you've deciphered that, hey, on my vehicle for this round, I need to do a bucket wash, we have a three bucket method. Now, this is not like a lot of the other three bucket methods. It's not one, one wash, one rinse, and then one wheel and tire. Our three bucket method is actually three buckets. Now, normally, this first bucket is invisible, okay? And what I mean by that is when you're washing your vehicle, right? You do maybe half a panel of your hood, and then you come down over here on your fender, right? You flip your wash mitt and then um, you come over into your door, right, onto a clean side, and you get that done, and now your wash mitt's dirty, right? You've done a couple of panels, your wash mitt is filthy, you need to get it cleaned up before it goes into any, any of your buckets. Normally our first bucket is invisible. This is where I just take my fire hose nozzle, I rinse out my mitt, wring it out, boom, there's one bucket. Now, for those of you that really wanna get super technical, if you genuinely want to have a third bucket, meaning a rinse bucket for your first bucket, Man, totally cool. Put it in there on the grit guard. Grit guards are always at the bottom of the buckets, just FYI. Um, this keeps the debris at the bottom of the bucket. But you rinse your mitt in your first bucket, wring it out. Come over to your second rinse bucket, rustle it on the grit guard, pull it out, wring it out. Now, before your wash mitt goes into your soap bucket, you are now dealing with a, well, I would hope a 100% clean, perfect world, we'll call it 99.9% clean wash mitt going back in your soapy water, back in your wash water before it touches another panel. So that's what our three bucket method is, okay? So a true two-stage rinsing of the wash mitt before it goes back in the wash water to touch the vehicle. That process is going to help eliminate, hopefully entirely, but if not entirely, as much as humanly possible, the, chances of, the chance of inducing swirls just from keeping the wash mitt clean, okay? The next question, very, very simple, if you have, uh, that I get a lot, is if you have a, a vehicle that has either got a conventional sealant or wax on it, like Shine Supply daddy -O, Shine Supply Signature, Shine Paste Wax, um, anything along those lines, Shine Soap is going to be your maintenance soap for a vehicle that is not ceramic coated. It's loaded with water softeners, it's got some polymers in it to kind of nourish the paint and make the, uh, the rinsing of it super easy. If your vehicle is ceramic coated, you want shift. Shift is designed for ceramic coated finishes and it is a pure vehicle shampoo loaded with beautiful raw materials and high surfactants, but no additives. If you have a vehicle that's ceramic coated, it doesn't want polymers and Teflons and Carnuba, stuff like that. It wants a, just a raw, pure vehicle shampoo. So that's what shift is for. So that should eliminate some confusion on the three buckets, how to load them up, um, you know, what soap to use, kind of the process of moving your mitt through these three buckets as you're doing your bucket wash. Hopefully that clears it up. Hey Chase, what do I wash my car with? Two very simple things. We, we are a certified installer of Geon Quartz Coatings and their maintenance lineup is absolutely wonderful. Now it does not have to be a Geon maintenance uh, item, but my, 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 I guess my answer to this is so long as the wash media that you're using is tried and trusted, uh, there are a ton of different brands out there. There's some different sites to get these mitts on. Um, I, I think you're in great shape. So long as it's premium, plush, high quality, great construction, and it's designed to pull debris off of the paint, you're in good shape. So in our boutique, we stock the Geon Smoothie and the Geon Mitt. Now the Mitt is, is more of a man-made, excuse me, um, of a, of, a, of a natural, it's a hide on the inside, it's a merino wool wash mitt. This is probably one of the softest things I've ever laid my hands on. So for anybody that gets a car done with us that has a super finicky, super soft paint finish, preferably gloss black, this is usually what we recommend. 
Um, the Gion Smoothie is a little bit more of a workhorse. It's a little bit more durable. It's going to last a little bit longer. This is a microfiber base. So these are the ones that we sell uh, and that we recommend in our lobby. But whatever you use, just make sure it's not a brush that you're just pushing stuff around and causing scratches with the brush. That's no, 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 no. Um, so, so long as you're using something super high quality, premium, plush, soft, and it's pulling the debris away from the paint, anything along these lines is going to serve you very, very well. So this portion of your maintenance wash can save you a ton of time or it can cost you a ton of time. And that's the rinsing and drying. So the first thing that I want to show you is what most people do, which is drying from a fire, or rinsing rather, from a fire hose nozzle. Now, this car is unpolished and unprotected, so the hydrophobic properties aren't that fantastic. But you can see that when you, when you rinse with the fire hose nozzle, it leaves you a ton of water on the surface left to dry. So you have a boatload, millions and millions of water beads on the surface, which when your car is ceramic coated or polished and sealed, that can actually be really rather entertaining, um, but it leaves a lot of work for your drying towel to do. So what I'm gonna show you right now is a method uh, called sheet rinsing or pool rinsing, however you wanna, however you wanna word it. But essentially what you do is you kill the water, take your fire hose nozzle off, pull your, put your water at a low speed out of your uh, spigot, and then instead of launching a million water beads all over the surface, you'll simply take and do a sheet rinse or a pool rinse, such as this, and what will happen is, is the water will sheet itself, and this car is not even protected very well. The, car will, the water will sheet itself off of the vehicle and you'll see that there are, there's far less water left on the vehicle. Now, if this car was polished and sealed or ceramic coated, which we're actually preparing it for that, um, there would almost be no water left on the vehicle. But you can see now when I go to dry it with my drying towel, there's hardly any work left for my drying towel to do. So the drying towel that we use and that, that we sell in our boutique is the Clin drying duo. Um, so, and when you're drying, I just wanted to run this over, run past this real quick. It's very simple. Um, once over the surface with very little pressure and you're done. That's if you have a good drying towel such as this. This is a big 25 by 37 Korean blend Helix Twist 1100 GSM. This is a monster towel. But when you're drying, use something thick, plush, soft, very well made, high quality. It'll absorb like mad. It'll make your job a lot easier, especially with a sheet rinse or a pool rinse. But I see a lot of people a lot of times ah, scrubbing and they're just doing all this back and forth. A, it's absolutely unnecessary. B, it causes swirls. Uh, C, you're working harder than you need to. So that's a great way to rinse and dry your vehicle without causing damage and to help things go smoother and quicker. 